Hey guys, it's Arielle again. Let's tune in to Young and the Restless, the week of November 5th to 9th. I'm a little sick, so bear with me. That's why I look a little rough. So this week, we all saw Chelsea walking in. She saw Sharon all hiding in the cottage. So she confronts um, Sharon and Adam, like, what's going on? You're my husband. Why are you here? Because, you know, Chelsea and Sharon don't have the best relationship. But Sharon was honest. She was like, look, girl, basically... Adam's trying to help me. I had a breakdown, and she was being honest, and Chelsea said, okay, you can stay here. And then Chelsea is a dummy, so she puts two and two together. She realizes that Adam's helping protect her because she realizes that Sharon's at the fire at the Newman house. So Chelsea right now is keeping her mouth shut. She's actually going along with Adam trying to, I don't really know if she's like helping Sharon, but she's at least going along with Adam while he helps Sharon. And meanwhile, with Sharon, Adam had her talk to a shrink this week, you know, she didn't want to. She was a little hesitant, but it actually was a good thing. She actually confessed to the shrink what she did, and the shrink said to her that she's got a lot of, um, you know, work to do, but that she'll probably, like, get through it. But she told her she's going to have to take medication, which is something that Sharon... Okay, little cat, you got my face. Sorry, the cat was in my face. Something that Sharon is just doesn't want to do. I'm like, look, girl, if you want to get better, you better get the medication because she's crazy. I like crazy Sharon, though. I like Sharon when she's saying, but I love Crazy Sharon. She's so interesting. Now, at the end of this week, we also learned there was a fire at Glowworm. Remember how I told you how Adam had asked that dude to um, set some fires all over the city to make it look like somebody else at the fire at the Newman house to take the fire, you know, the, the fire, the heat off of Sharon? Well, apparently what it looks like is the guy didn't do what Adam said. Adam said to burn down a van vacant warehouse basically and he went and burned down Glowworm, which does not look like a vacant warehouse to me and also remember jeffrey who is part owner of Glowworm, is chelsea's father remember she learned that a couple months ago that her father is jeffrey so in a way adam almost had his this guy burn down his wife's family restaurant that's not confirmed yet but we're pretty sure that the guy was an idiot and didn't pay attention to Adam. And I don't know if he's not scared because Adam can be a little scary. I don't know if this guy really knows who Adam Newman is because we all know Adam Newman is not the guy to be messed with. So we got to stay tuned next week to find out. But we did learn that the insurance settlement for Jeffrey and for Gloria is going to be 7.5 mil, which you know Gloria and Jeffrey love money. They love being rich. So this is going to be a good thing for them. Of course, Kevin, he needs money for tag and grab. So what do you know he does? He asks them for the money. Of course, Gloria said no, and Kevin got mad. I mean, but Kevin, he's a little, as Billy says, he always dresses like a chipmunk, so I'm sorry. Kevin is a little, he, he could go snap at any minute. You know, Kevin back in the day was Crazy Kevin, and I never really thought Crazy Kevin completely went away. I always felt that there's a little bit of him still left inside, and that the slightest thing could just set him back to being crazy again, which I did kind of love Crazy Chipmunk Kevin. So, basically, that was that was all with the Gloria, Jeffrey, Adam, Chelsea, Sharon uh, debacle for this week. Next, let's talk about Summer and Phyllis. So, you know, Phyllis has been trying to get back in good graces with her daughter, Summer. And Summer actually, this week, kind of let Phyllis extend the olive branch. Phyllis bought over some new um, nail polish for the new Newman line. And she was going to have a mani Patty day with Summer, but Summer, you know, had plans. But she actually let her mom... They did a couple manis, which was nice. Summer actually told her mom she doesn't hate her and that she's forgiven her. Um, of course, she doesn't hate her anymore, but she still hates Ronan. So like I had mentioned last week, Summer basically is dealing with... Ronan is a mentor to this little boy, Jamie. He's not little, it's this guy, Jamie. He's around Summer's age. And so she's trying to basically get back at Ronan by messing with Jamie, which I don't think is cool because Jamie looks like an innocent bystander. He didn't do anything wrong. And so Summer is on face place... You know, and she's pretending to be a girl that Brittany, who likes him, and she's just trying to find out inside information. Information that she can use to bite Jamie and Rona in the behind. So, of course, Jamie likes her, thinking this is this other girl, and he starts confiding in her and tells her, basically, that he was in juvie and that he did some bad stuff. So, I don't think this is cool, but we're to believe that Summer told everyone on Face Place, so now... Jamie's all upset and depressed because everyone in Face Place knows his business. I don't think that's cool. Summer, I know you're upset, but I don't think it's cool for you to involve an innocent person who... Jamie didn't do anything. What did he do to you? He's a bystander here. 
if you're so innocent too, you should relate to him because he did nothing wrong. And here you are trying to sabotage him. Like, that's not cool to me, Summer. And you got issues and you need to deal with that. And Nick needs to check you and so does your mom because you're acting like how uh, Adam said last week, a narcissistic spoiled brat. That's exactly how you're acting. You need to get it together because it's not cool. Don't be getting Jamie all in a tip and I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I don't think it's cool. Um, I think she needs to be checked, like I said. And something else, basically, that happens, even though Summer is upset with Ronan and he, she doesn't like, I guess by default, Jamie, she actually wants Nick to be with Avery. She actually likes her Aunt Avery, and she wants to see her dad happy, and she thinks that Avery is a good influence on her dad and that he'll make, they'll make each other happy. And so surprisingly, in a little twist... Summer wants her father with her mom's sister, if you can believe that. But hey, I like Avery, so I'm like, more power to you. I agree with Summer. I think Avery's a great match for Nick. And we'll see what happens next week. You know, Avery and Nick did go out on a date this week. Didn't go 100% according to plan, but they did end up kissing, and Phyllis did end up walking in on that. Which actually brings me to my next discussion, how she confronts Avery. Says, and I quote... Um, she accuses her of wanting to live her life. Now, if I get this straight, Phyllis, didn't you accuse Christine Blair of wanting to live your life two weeks ago? And you've also accused other people in the past of wanting to live your life. Who doesn't want your life, Phyllis? Your life is just so fabulous, right? You've got a loving husband. Wrong. You have a loving family that loves you very much. Wrong. You've got a great job. Okay, so you do have a great job, but you just got that job only because Jack's the CEO and Jack likes you. Don't get it twisted, Phyllis. Your life is not the bomb. Okay, so don't act like people want to be you. They envy you because your life is a hot mess right now. And Avery ended up saying, no, she does not want Nick. You know, but like I said, Phyllis saw them kissing, and that was no friendship kiss, if you know what I mean. Now, let's get on to, since we're talking about Phyllis, she was asked an interesting question this week by Mr. Jack Abbott. You know, Jack went in for surgery, which somehow someone leaked to the media. I mean, it's Jack Abbott, obviously, Hospital staff and personnel would love to leak that to a media type source and get paid for it And so now everyone knows that the CEO of Newman had surgery He's in a lot of pain. He needs a lot of help with recuperating So he asked Phyllis to move into the guest house with him and to basically uh, help him through the recovery process He said no, it's just as a friend thing nothing romantic because you guys know that Phyllis and he used to be quite steamy not too long ago, but he claims it's just as strictly business strictly as a friend and Phyllis agreed. At first she was hesitant, but I mean, no offense or anything, Phyllis, but what do you have going on in your life? You don't have a husband, you don't have any kids that like you, so you may as well go live with Jack because you've got nowhere else to go. No one else wants to be with your behind. So she agrees. She's going to help Jack move in. Um, I, they didn't state how long, and I mean, are we wondering if they're going to get back together? Probably, only because Jack always has a soft spot for red, as he calls her. <clears throat> but whatever. And like I said, you know, Jack's been in a little bit of pain since the operation. We don't know if it's just recovery pain or if there's more going on, if they got the bullet. Like, we don't know anything, all, all the information yet. But we do know that he still is pissed off at Billy. That is one thing he's made very clear. Now, let's get to the juicy, juicy, juicy from this week. So, Mr. Billy Abbott finds out the person who kidnapped his wife, Victoria, is Eddie G. Eddie G is some former mobster that Billy used to be involved with back in the day. You know how Billy used to be Mr. Playboy, always gambling, and Jack was always having to pay off his gambling debts? Well, I guess this was one debt he did not pay off. He told Nikki that he owed this guy $100,000, which now the guy wants $2 million because he knows that Billy is rich, and he also knows that Billy is married to a Newman. So he upped it from a million or from 100000 to $2 million. So he told him not to involve Victor. He told him to not involve the police. So Billy basically did the next best thing. He told Nikki, and Nikki, he said he needs to get the money in cash, ASAP, and so Nikki is going to try and work that out. Um, she doesn't like the fact of not telling Victor, and she also is living with Billy, 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 because he put her daughter in this position. You know what, no, I'm not going to say I love Billy, I love him and Victoria, but I got to give it to Nikki on this one. Billy, you messed up. Why you didn't just, I mean, he claims that he didn't pay the man the $100,000 because he was going to jail. Why should I pay him? I understand that, Billy, but didn't you think that in your mind the man's going to eventually get out of jail? And he's probably going to want his money. Anyway, so I'm a little bit mad at Billy because that just, to me was dumb on his part. I don't know if he just straight forgot or was just an idiot. But either way, because of your mistakes, Victoria is the one that was kidnapped. And, I mean, at least it looks like she's being held in a cell where he's at least kind of feeding her. So at least she's getting fed. But, 
you know Miss Newman can't handle being in a dark, cramped space without her room service and her manis and petties all the time. So we'll see what's going to happen with that. I'm very curious to find out. And we did see Billy pulling out a gun. I don't know if he's going to intend to use that on Mr. Eddie G or if it's just for show. But I know that he's got the gun, which shows me that he's going to be gangsta when it comes to getting his wife. So that was pretty much it for this week. Um, one other thing that happened was Victor basically confronted Nick and said to him that he thinks that Nick is a coward for not fighting for Newman. And Nick said, no, he's not fighting for Newman because he wants to devote 100% of his time to his kids, which I respect. I love Nick and I respect that. And I want to ask you guys, do you really think Nick is 100% trying to devote this time for his kids? Or do you think that Victor said he's a coward and that he is afraid that he's not going to be able to get Newman back and that's why he's not even going to try? Personally, I think Nick is a good father, and I think he doesn't want his kids to grow up like how he grew up with his dad, always away, always working, never there, and I think he wants to really be 100% there for his kids. And let's face facts, his kids, especially Summer, need some parental guidance right now, and I do believe that he's not being a coward. I do believe that he is trying to really devote himself for his kids. And I had also asked you guys before, like, who you wanted to see more of or less of, and someone else I thought of who I know she's crazy, but who I would love to see more of, Daisy Carter. Even though her haircut's horrible, she's great. She is a really good character. We don't know where Daisy is. We gotta find her. She knows about Ricky. We don't know where she is, but she needs to come back now. Because if we don't have Sheila, she's the next best thing to Sheila. And someone else who I love seeing, I love, like I said, Sharon, y'all know this. I like Crazy Sharon. Crazy Sharon is a spicy fireball for the show. I like her when she's hallucinating and setting fires and talking to ghosts and acting a hot mess. That is the kind of Sharon that I have to give her a brava, Sharon. I think Crazy Sharon is great. I think Crazy Sharon needs to stay. I think that the writers need to maybe think that into a new storyline. Maybe making Sharon go bonkers like Patty did or like Jenna. What do you guys think? Hit me up on Twitter at Scarielli, S C A R. I-E-L-L-E-Y. Again, that's at Scary Ellie. Hit me up on Twitter. And uh, last but not least, just today I went to get a uh, little Starbucks. And um, when I was walking in, I saw the woman that plays Patty, you know, Paul's sister, sitting outside. And I was like, oh, my God, that's Patty. I was going to go up to her after I came out because I was really thirsty. I wanted to get my iced coffee first. And, of course, she was gone. So I'm sorry, guys, because I was definitely going to go up to her and get a picture to show you. But I can just tell you, she's beautiful. Her eyes are sunny. Her eyes in the show are like Jack's eyes are so piercing and like crystal-like. Her eyes are beautiful. She's beautiful. And I just, I, I want to see more of her. Get us some more Patty. So again, let me know if you guys want to see anything or hear anything in particular. And I do have my debate coming up soon for you guys. And have a great week.